Greetings from the farm. Hope you're well. My name is Chisha Folotia and I'm so grateful to have you back with us here on the Mondo Farms channel. Today is Africa Freedom Day. And one of the things I wanted to get done is to do a quick update of all that you see around me. This is the onion that we have here at Westgate. And if you stay with us, you'll hear the story that you've actually seen this onion before a long time ago. So I wanted to start this story about our onions at Westgate by having a look at where the water comes from. Now, as every farmer knows, before you establish any crop, before you want to grow any kind of crop, especially horticultural products, products like onions and stuff, which require a lot of water, you've got to know where your water is coming from. And where I'm standing now, around me here, is the Westgate Reservoir. This is one of our reservoirs that we have uh, here on the farm and it carries about 1.3 million liters of water and we need a lot of water for the onions that we'll be talking about uh, down there. Our Westgate Reservoir was built last winterish, around about July, August. Simple enough structure. We used a traditional pond liner, which we buy from uh, Livestock Services, and then we had an expert help us with that. Actually, one of these days I really need to show uh, how this thing was actually built but we'll be building a couple more reservoirs later this year and I promise to share comprehensive videos on those ones it's something that I've been asked about over there is where the water is coming in from our water source and we have to hold the water so we have our solar system that gives us water here and it gets stored in here you have a pump house that's here and that takes up to the pumps there up to the apex the other apex reservoirs on top and another one that we call the outlet that takes from down there and it drops down to the onions on the lower side so this um, Westgate reservoir with this 1.3 million liters of water really serves to service um, quite a lot of areas around here I'm gonna take you down uh, to Westgate and you see the onions that are down there so here's our reservoir, water res Westgate reservoir behind me and if I take a panning look you can see some of the stuff that we actually have here at Westgate. I've shown you the farm in bits and pieces uh, for example these are the water tanks that service the shade houses over there the trucks just passing now and it is full of uh, maize Find it. So the guys have been harvesting the maize that's over there on block six and it's now going down to the grain store down at Riverside. We grow a little bit of maize but it's not like a uh, thing, it's not like commercial maize that we actually want to sell. We just grow it for, for fooding ourselves uh, here at the farm, our workers here, as well as ourselves, ourselves at home as well in the saga. So that's your Westgate block six. Uh, let's do the numbers actually. I always like to show numbers. So that's block one, two, three, where the shared houses are, four, where we have some eggplant, five, which is fallow and uh, not being farmed on, six, which is where the maize was, and finally seven, which is where the eggplant was. There's a video that shows our eggplant that was actually here. And we will be talking about eggplants. We've got these old eggplants that are gone now. Then we've got some new eggplants in there and I'll show you a little bit of a video later. So I'm walking down over there because that's where the focus of this video is. And we're talking about the onions. And I think already you can see how beautiful it looks on a sort of mid afternoon. Green, 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 green. Tikondama green. Quick glimpse of uh, one of our shade houses. This is one of the big shade houses, 50 by 40, and inside it are yellow and red peppers. And you can actually hear the machines, hopefully, hear the machines spraying, and the other guys are, are spraying one of the weekly things in there. So Westgate is one of the uh, main areas of production here at the farm. There's Riverside down by the river and then there's Westgate. Um, we named it because it's the gate 
the gate over there, that's at the western side of the thing. So it's really quite obvious. And the guys took to the name. So uh, it's what we call this area. So several uh, blocks in different production areas here as, at Westgate, as I've said. So I'm walking towards uh, block one and two, which is where the onions have been established uh, this time. So let's go and take a closer look at these guys. So here you see the two main blocks of onion that we've established. Uh, on my left here is uh, block one, and on the right is block two. So we're going to start with having a close look at block one. Now, do you remember the onions nursery that we had at Riverside 2D? You remember the one on the other video that gave us a problem as we're trying to nurse onions in rainy season? Well, here they are. Those onions were sown on, uh, as it says on the crop poster here, January 28. And then we finally were able to transplant them in uh, April, around about April 12 to 13. Can you imagine? They stayed at the nursery for so long. The whole rainy season onion thing was such a nightmare. Such a nightmare, honestly, nightmare. I should get paid for this. Anyway, it was such a nightmare. So we finally managed to transplant them and uh, Here's a quick look at the story of these onions um, from the time when we actually uh, tra transplanted them. Right now they're transplanting on you. Look at the thing as we see a copy of Married is a chaco manual eating. This playing now in the side for insects. The Pacamona Mista the fun side. So that you are combined. Yes, to get block one. Control no zoya ko yu. West gate, block one. This playing a copster. Spring a four a hyper fit. I 
Yeah, thank you. So, so chat, so. So chat bon mi en dera sa is yamene ay. Service, I want to go. I So that's a quick look at the story of these onions here on uh, block one here at Westgate. And you know what? They're actually doing really, really, really well. And you can see from the smile on my face that, you know, oof, this is not a problem. This is not a problem. I got our problems, but this is not a problem. So let's go in and have a look at how these onions look. We would say they're about six weeks after transplant. But they were delayed. If we, you know, go back and have a look at the 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 uh, crop poster there. So they were delayed. So they stayed in the uh, nursery for much much longer than they would normally have stayed in. So the usual onion situation that we have uh, here at Mondo Farms. We let's see. Where do I start from? Let's talk about the beds. One meter beds. We've got four drip lines. We use a forty centimeter drip. And people tell us, no, for on your knee, you must use the 20 centimeter. Look, we have to be economically realistic. And last year we were able to find a very, very, very reasonable source of some drip lines from India. And we've been using them around the farm ever since. And we've had uh, a lot of very successful crops um, with them. So it works for us. So one meter bed, and then you have the four drips and they're able to do about a 30 centimeter each so that basically covers it if you do your arithmetic so the onion itself uh, i'm gonna get down closer looking for some of the larger ones it's actually looking extremely good and extremely healthy we've been really looking after this we've been growing onion now here at the farm this is our third year so i think we're getting the hang of it we really sort of get to know and understand what needs to be done in what way. As many of you will know from farming, especially those who are maybe a little bit getting started in, a, in experience, there's too much advice. Onion is, uh, farming, sorry, should I say, is like cooking. Everybody has got different ways and means and things you should do and not do and put this and put that. And you really just have to start understanding your own way, what works for you and you put a lot of time and effort into it and you end up with something like this. It actually works. So taking another look at some of the onions from this angle, with a bit of a better light, I think here, you can see some of the things. How many leaves do we have? We have about two to three, some with four. One of the things you saw us spraying on the video was a fungicide. And that fungicide is to deal with an issue called purple blotch, which is obviously a fungal disease, and it's horrible. Purple blotch actually dries out the tips of the thing. So when you're looking in your onions, we're looking for little dry tips, and we're not seeing many. Yes, he shoots, he scores. So it's, it's a success in terms of the fungicide. You can either spray uh, your insecticides and your fungicides preventatively where you spray light ones or you can spray light ones in order to prevent issues or you spray curatively which is when you find a problem then you spray against it so if you remember our nursery and its issues 
that whole onion nursery and 2D was a problem. So we were able to transplant the first batch and fill up all these beds here. Uh, up to a certain point and then we just didn't have any more and you'll see when I walk down there that those ones over there are actually much bigger and stronger than these ones so it's like somehow there's some little sort of grading that's going on so now let's take a very quick look at these how many are there one two three four four ish three ish beds um, that were actually transplanted last and we see that they're lagging behind their friends but they're catching up quite quickly so as I was saying, those healthier looking ones there were transplanted the first time and they came good very quickly. And then we had to come back and finish a little bit more transplanting on these ones. So we went back in uh, a couple of days ago and we actually were able to get these guys out of there. And so far they're establishing themselves and catching up. So you can see quite a little bit of a height difference between these ones here and those ones down there. I'm just gonna walk over now to where the uh, the older ones, the more healthier ones are, because like all farmers, we like a bit of a success story. So where I'm coming to now, uh, here, is where some of the bigger ones are. And you can see a lot more green in the background. So here are some of the bigger, healthier ones. And as I walk back towards block two, which, by the way, does not look like a carpet. Looks absolutely excellent, doesn't it? So as I walk back there, then we have a quick look at these guys. Yep, there's a bit of brown tips here. And yeah, we did notice some purple blotch in here, but we have sprayed against it, the fungicide. So we think, we actually sprayed Copster, uh, which is one of the stronger fungicides, but sometimes with medication, you actually want to go in and do it, you know, just get a little bit stronger. So the cop star that we sprayed was a little bit stronger than maybe just a normal mancozeb or cabendazim. I can never say that word, cabendazim. I think it's cabendazim, saf. Anyway, that was a little bit stronger, but you know like when you have a headache and sometimes you'll decide, let me just take a aspirin, let me take a paracetamol, um, or let me take a, you know, a cyclophenac or something stronger and you just gotta side sometime so this particular time we just said it let's go in because you don't want to take any chances with your onion uh, with things like fungal diseases like purple blotch because it can really mess you up right now in its um, leaf stage vegetative stage or it can mess you up when it actually starts bulbing so we didn't take any chances here are some of the even larger ones that are looking even more healthy so these were transplanted first when we pick up transplants from the seedling nursery we kind of go with the bigger ones first they look healthier so when you transplant them first of course you're going to get a thing they're going to be much bigger than the rest and we're now leaving block one we're leaving block one here's the poster for block one just a random reminder and we're going to be talking about block two but all in all the uh onions here look quite successful and i'm quite happy with them now I turn my attention to block two. Block two looks different from block one. And block one, if you remember, was transplanted, but block two was direct seeded. And this is what you get when you have successful direct seeding of your onion. Or oh, you can tell I'm feeling good when the Scottish accent comes out, eh? Oh, hi. So there we are. Beautiful lines and lines and lines. We use our planter, and our planter has got eight lines. And we had to get someone to come and show it. was our first time to use it, so we had to get someone to come and show it. But I think you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you can see how the drip tapes have been placed in between uh, some of the lines. Yes, there's a bit of wiggly wonky because sometimes the lines weren't exactly straight, but oh, I'm telling you, it's absolutely beautiful. So it was our first time ever to do our direct planting of onions. We had bought the actual onion planter way back, I think it was in January. Uh, we bought it from Saro Agro. They've got a very good range of uh, all the, veg the farming inputs, as you know. And we sort of got someone from Modern Agricultural Services to help us. And he came along and he showed us exactly how to use it as best as possible. There was also a matter of calibrating uh, the wheels on the planter so that we could get a very good onion population. And here are the guys actually 
uh, using the planter. Yingani kumo wakambati magale chai. Ata kumo magale tumsho simpon. Bavem bandi wa na we diamu shak imisa. Arenu imisa. So lago ka dropa. Chamushe ni chakoti. Ipa kapchira ya chepa. Eka chepa ndiye jamaa njomo ndulanga na tungara wanu wanu munga sisiza kumutu fredis. Azioni. So, kushita munga waka pressinga kwa down pangwa na? Eh. Eh. So na waka sikonga niti ambo. Speed. Ah, so chabi. As long as we are so good, we are not going to be able to get the seeds. We are not going to be able to get the seeds. I am the first slow. Same, same. Yes. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? Mumba mbobwa. Manji. Mbibi tezo kamba hapo hivi. Sapa masidi ya ndokira pa mwamba chepa chubu maichi. Nika ka exercise kama mwishu. Você vai se cantar? A partir de agora, gai dia não nos enchendo. Gai dia nos encara ni diabo. So, o coxa é de qual bed? Eu sei que o com. O que é que ele? Você me diz a quem diabo? Pois meu bed já está aí, ainda é cheio para o cura. As mulheres ainda só com diabo onde colher merda. Jika, ibu jaga kongkak cemo yang di la bed. Dia zaman zaman mungkin mungkin sebanyak di la ibu yang di zigzag. Momenu. Uto, izinbe atau izap. Azuan. I, mereka istif kita dalam bosi fukuru la foot. I, foot nasi nang usiza tu uza kita ti jisanga. Tiranga na muma muma pots matu muna faka masimbe omoka gaka yenda as long as we react so good is ungulu guys masidi ya dropping ni kama sula kwenye gashanga greetings we're here at Westgate two and we are going to plant just finishing off planting the last five lines. Um, of onion that was left. You can see this here behind me coming up with the planter. So these here are the beds that were sown yesterday. Um, as you can see, direct planting with a machine like we have here, the four row uh, cedar, which we got from Saro Agro. It's quite easy and painless. It really is uh, quite straightforward. So we're very happy uh, with this new system. There it goes. We had uh, done these beds yesterday. And then we, from the seed that we had bought, then we realized that 
we ran short of the seed and then we had to come up with another 700 grams uh, of seeds which we're just finishing up today and uh, this is Westgate Block 2 where we have our uh, direct seeded Texas Grano look at how it's growing the, uh, the germination I would say has been successful Looks amazing. Let's get block block two. And I'm gonna go on. Ndar, mpasi ni mnyamata ali ime hapo. Iwe kumba pa we mnyamata. Eh? Sawali ime ka? Hmm. Ajami na ribe. Hmm. Westgate block two. So that to almost at Nuku block two. Sanka Rafun set in Jacob Duke. This spraying prevention fungicide chemical mister. Prevention chemical fungicide mister. Mm, it goes up by the past start. Next week, in the Banja for agro food plants. Mm. Those are only. I those. Hmm? <laughs> There are many problems and problems. Yes, yes. 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 Pokatangan <laughs> I'm pushing up, which is a good day. I'm going to go to the 
tenga cheka pa ka build ka mikai na mauzu chaka tele mzaka za widinga mamoje badaka ka ile sikana na mamizi akaonyoni hapa yavutika simo And so the story continues. Our onion here, direct seeded onion, is looking absolutely excellent. There's issues we have about spacing and what are we going to do with all this onion? Because if we look carefully here at the spacing, I think it's too close. It is an issue. I think a lot of them are spacing. So we're gonna come and thin them out from here literally we want to be putting in something like um, three fingers in between each onion then they'll grow well so we'll be coming out to take out some of these and we'll show you that in another update where there's onion there's weed especially this guy Why? Wow. so we'll be doing that and then this transplant will be going down to Riverside 2 ABC and that's where the beds are already being set up so this is Riverside 2 ABC and some of the beds that are actually getting ready. They are actually ready now because we know uh, that the, um, the transplants, accidental transplants, will actually be coming very soon. So we're getting ready, making room here. And the next step here now uh, on 2 ABC is to actually make, uh, put in the drips. One of the things we do here at the farm is make sure that we have a dedicated team member, one of the staff, that's here. Uh, constantly looking after irrigating and sorting out some of the, the issues that he might find from time to time doing some light weeding so that's Morgan one of our guys here at the farm and you can see him basically walking around literally casting his uh, descending eye on how the drips are going drips get clogged they they don't especially with you know in the real world there we go he's gonna do some sort of loosening and stuff of it and that's basically what he's doing let me try and zoom in on him so he's just basically making sure that everything is moving well so the drips are actually on and which is what uh, Morgan is is doing so he switched on this particular one have a quick look at how it's set up You've got this thing, which we call a bypass. This thing here, there's a T from the main line into this, and its bypass is carrying one, two, three, four, five, six beds. How many beds should a bypass carry? It depends on so many factors. One is the length. So these ones are about 30 meters or so. So it's the length and also there's the water pressure. Remember when I started the video and I was up at the Westgate Reservoir? It's over there. So our gravity drop is not that great. So we decided to have these bypasses here. We used to really struggle with it. So once he opens up there and everything works out well. So having a very quick look at how the drip irrigation actually works. Drip irrigation is called drip irrigation because it irrigates by dripping. Guys, I'm sorry, it's one of those really obvious things. It's just there. There's nothing you can do about it. They'll never change its name. From what I remember or know, drip irrigation was um, sort of pioneered in Israel uh, some years and years and years ago, and it's now basically gone over around the world. It really allows the best use of a precious resource like water. So, it drips. Yes, you're seeing a few pieces where it's sort of coming a little bit more, but in fact, I think here is actually a piece of dripping. Here it is. Drip, 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 drip. Yes, it's quite boring. You can't stand here watching drip irrigation, but it does work. So we found that drip irrigation works really well for our onion uh, plants, and we've been doing it for the last couple of years quite successfully. Others will say, no, for on your knee, you must use a sprinkler. Z. Please, we're happy for you. Use a sprinkler. We have drips and we're using them quite successfully and it's working for us. Farming, too many opinions. 
So here's a quick look at our crop poster for this particular batch. And as you can see, this is the same Texas uh, grano, white onion, stack airs, and we direct planted this one on the April the 27th. So today being May the 25th, this is exactly four weeks. Amazing. And this is what we're getting. And this is one of our most successful uh, places on the farm. Some of you may have seen a video where we were planting um, carrots with a direct cedar, and they were actually here on this same Westgate block too. And that was a few months ago. As you know, here on the farm, we use the same land to plant different things over time. So during rainy season, we had the carrots. It wasn't exactly a very successful crop, hence you've never heard of it ever again, because there's only so much failure one can show on one's farming channel. Here's a money shot. Look at that. I call it the money shot. Beautiful, beautiful lines of onion seedlings, one month old, doing their thing. Oh yeah. Still looking at the uh, direct planted onions here on West Gate Block 2. And a very interesting thing that I noticed on this particular bed, there is one line here and then there's nothing on this line. And then there's two lines there. So these are the four lines that came on the planter. And so what we can see is that there's a whole bunch of them here. And this is the issue with direct planting even using a machine. So there must have been a blockage in the machine that sort of got freed when it came to this section. So if I step back again, you can actually see the issue there. And that's how the lines are. So you don't get 100%, 100% uh, planting of this. Well, generally for everything, it's there. So if we're not 100%, or at least a 96, 98 uh, percent but this type of things will happen. So you get a lot of onion that was released when I think when the wheels of the, the thing, the, the cogs of the machine were actually released there. And then after that, it jammed a little bit and then it continued. But all of these are viable, beautiful little onion seedlings, a little bit too close together. So we'll be moving them apart and doing the transplanting as we we're saying earlier. So there you have it, a good look at our onions here at Westgate, block one and two. On block one, we looked at the uh, transplanted onions that came from a very, very, very rough childhood down in the nursery on Riverside 2D. And it looks like they're doing well. And I think we're, we're quite happy with how things are going. And then here, next to me here on block one, uh, block two, sorry, we have our direct seeded ones which are growing so well and so amazingly well that we're actually even going to transplant some of these as we thin them out in a couple of weeks and take them down back to Riverside 2A, B and C. Onion is one of our major crops here on the uh, out, on, at Winterthorn Farm and we always like featuring it here on the Mondo Farms channel. If you subscribe to the channel, you'll always be alerted and kept abreast of all the new videos that are coming, which is round about every week to, t week to 10 days. And we show you the various, various things that we do and that we grow here at Mondo Farms uh, on the outskirts of Chongwe. Uh, like the video, if you do like it, that's pressing the uh, thumbs up button. And of course you can share the video as well on some of your social networks and to other people who are very interested in some of the things that we do in terms of horticultural, agricultural practices here in Southern Africa. And of course, we'd like to hear your comments. What has been your experience with direct seeding versus transplanting? I'd like to know. Comment in the, in the, in the place below. Chisha Folotia here. I'm going home now. I'm hungry and I get a little bit of rest today on this public holiday. Thanks very much for joining us. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.